Hi, I'm Justin Mason from Performance Lexus in St. Catharines. Let's check out the new NX Hybrid together. Hybrids and electric vehicles are huge in the industry right now. And Lexus has had hybrids for a number of years, but so much has changed. One of the things that's changed is what the term hybrid really means. There's so many different, you know, brandings and things like that. Lexus has called this a self-charging hybrid, but there's also a plug-in hybrid. There's also a mild hybrid, a conventional hybrid. There's tons of different ways to look at the industry. So the NX 350H is actually the only conventional hybrid and also a self-charging hybrid in that segment right now, meaning you can put gas in it and you can put regular gas in it, by the way, even though it says premium is recommended, it's not required for the 350H. And sometimes the electric motor is gonna work, sometimes the gas engine is going to work, and most of the time they're just gonna be working together. This is very different than something like a mild hybrid, which is more just assisting when the vehicle is stopped or at really slow speeds and never on like a full electric power. And obviously it's very different than a plug-in hybrid where you can actually run full EV without the electric motor and charge it up by like plugging it into uh, to like a stage two or even your house and stuff like that. So on the NX350H, we have a 2.5 liter gas engine paired with three electric motors. We have two under the hood and one in the rear to give it the all wheel drive power. The result is amazing fuel economy, no stress about any type of, you know, plugging stations or, you know, that range anxiety that a lot of plug-in uh, vehicles have right now. And then also just a really smooth ride, which is a great result as well. I personally love the hybrid direction. Instead of going full plug-in right now, that's just my own personal preference, but uh, I'll talk to you a little bit why. One of the big things that I get asked all the time is why doesn't Lexus have more plugins right now? We do have the RZ coming, but it's not really readily available at a lot of dealerships right now. Instead, we have a ton of hybrids and sort of when I, I talked to Lexus about this, some of the feedback they gave me was when you look at the big picture of the industry right now and kind of what's happening with so many brands putting all of their resources and what I mean by resources is the materials that are required to make those really high output, big range batteries like lithium. And instead, Lexus said, well, instead of making, you know, a handful of plug-in vehicles uh, using, you know, massive batteries, instead we can use a lot smaller battery, a lot smaller resources and make, you know, a hundred hybrids for every four plug-in, you know, full plug-in uh, vehicles out there. So this result would be, is what they think, in a little bit more of a, a more sustainable approach to, you know, making the Enviro a little bit more, you know, eco-friendly and, and things like that when it comes to emissions. So I really like that answer. I think it's really cool. I thought it was more about the infrastructure, especially here in Canada right now. There's not a ton of charging stations. And even with my own personal experiences, when I have found charging stations, there's only been like, you know, four in a parking lot at a mall, three of them are taken, maybe one's not working, and then I have to wait for someone anyway. So right now I would definitely go hybrid over plug-in, but that's my own personal preference. Put in the comments what you guys think. But anyway, let's check out the NX. So looking at the front, this one is the executive model. Uh, you'll see that it is in the Gratian blue color, which I absolutely love. And the grill is kind of this off color gray, which adds a really nice contrast. One of the things that I really like, and it's so silly because most people would definitely overlook it, is when you look at like the, the rubber seals around a vehicle, they're kind of never black. And for some reason, it kind of complements nicely with this grill. There's a little bit of pearl to that grill too. It's the new take on the executive and luxury version of the spindle grill. So it's not super aggressive. It definitely, you know, kind of captures a little bit of presence there, even versus the bigger brother RX, which you can see in the background behind me. So on the front, we have a really nice, elegant, but not overly aggressive grill, which I absolutely love. And also we have the multi kind of triple beam LED headlights. This is in this package adaptive. Now, some other brands have called this, you know, matrix lighting or, you know, intelligent lighting and stuff like that. This is an intelligent adaptive headlight. And what I really like about that is it's, it's kind of the new version of auto high beam. It used to be that when you had your auto high beam, it used to drive me crazy because I'd be driving and every street light, my high beams would turn off or on. And when a car would be coming, it would turn off and then back on and another car would come and it would go off and on. With the intelligent headlights, essentially it turns off the actual LED bulb that the object or pedestrian or car is in. So 
There are some cool videos online about it. It's really hard to recreate this in a showroom, but when you see it in action, especially in like a foggy day or snow or rain, it just shows that you can have so much more of that high beam on and just turn off the section where the, the oncoming traffic is or maybe the car crossing over your path. And it just, it just creates more light and it's great, especially on dark Canadian roads. Uh, so that's what we have there. We have our daytime running light just above that. And above the daytime running light is where the signals are. It's so another thing not a lot of people look at when shopping for cars is how, how do the signals look? Because it's not something that we see sort of when the car is parked or when the car is running, but others see when we have our turn signal on. And I know it's always caught your attention when you see a luxury car and it's got a nice you know, LED strip for the turn signal or one of the ones that kind of have a little bit more motion to it. And uh, Lexus did a great job on these ones as well. Below the headlight, we do still have the headlight washer. Not all packages have that. This one is the 350H Executive. Uh, I think in some of the F-Sports and things like that, it does get rid of it, but it is still a, a cool feature to see, especially when salt and stuff like that plays a big part in, uh, in our roadways. Uh, you'll see we have some, some sensors on the bumper for you know parking sensors and uh, front cross, tra tra cross traffic alert, things like that. And then some piano black accents that actually have some cooling vents there too. And you'll see a little, little kind of elements here beside the fog light that fires on when you're doing any type of uh, turning. It's kind of like a, a cornering lamp. Again, really cool feature when you're on a dark road that might not have too much street lighting for, for curb lights and stuff like that. It just fires that light on to, uh, to give you a little bit more uh, idea of what's beside you. Uh, so that's the front end. I really like it. Uh, let me show you the side profile because the NX, in my opinion, can be a little bit misleading. Sometimes I see pictures online and it makes it look super small. Sometimes when I see them parked in person, like in the showroom, it seems small, but outside it seems really big. So it really depends on kind of your angle and the style and things like that. But taking a look, the silhouette you'll see kind of favors the front end to have a little bit longer. And then as it flows to the back, it kind of gets to be like a little bit more of a stubby hatchback design. Uh, again, remember what N stands for in NX is nimble. And when you look at the way the sportiness of the back kind of you know goes up to make sure we have some really good headroom for those rear seat occupants, but then slopes off like a hatchback, it's, it kind of gives you that vibe of exactly what Lexus is trying to do. Uh, we also have these unique wheels to the executive package with the kind of dark, gray, almost black textured fenders on the gas model of the NX on like an F Sport, for instance, that would be more painted. So uh, on here, uh, it does kind of complement and blend in nicely with that same sort of uh, piece at the bottom of the door. Um, I, I've never really known the, the reason for those, but I do think it must protect a little bit from things on the road, uh, like stones, stuff like that, because it's just, a, it's just a softer, more forgiving material than like actual paint. And with a beautiful color like this, it would suck if your paint had a bunch of chips on the bottom because uh, you, have to, you have to touch that up or paint it because it's a blue, beautiful car and you can't be driving around like that. Uh, we also see a little bit of black tied in here with some chrome. Uh, the chrome on the mirror matches kind of the whole silhouette of the side of those windows, as well as the, the piano black matches that center molding as well. So. Um, Still pretty similar to the last generation NX, but it's just a modern take on it. It's not a big difference, but it's still there. And then on the, the electronic door handles, we do have some black as well. Uh, as we get to the back of the vehicle, uh, you'll see, again, full-size back door, so really easy to get in and out of, even for a small car. Even though when you look at the measurements of this car in the segment, in terms of like length and things like that, it is still one of the longer ones. Um, and I think most of that is backseat space because when you compare cargo capacity in the segment, a lot of the vehicles have very similar. It's just a matter of like usable space. Uh, but I, I've noticed getting in and out of a lot of, you know, cars in the segment. I'm 6'1", so if, if I'm gonna notice it's hard to get into one, I usually pay attention to like the shape of the door and stuff like that. This one, I actually, it's fine. I'm not, it's not like, I, I don't feel like I'm getting into a small car by any means. So that's something to think about when you're shopping. Uh, going to the rear. So the NX was the, one of the first vehicles in the new kind of take on the Lexus branding. And the big part of that was the LEXUS instead of that Lexus emblem that was just kind of 
on the back, similar to what we saw on the front. And that was, you know, one of the first vehicles. I absolutely love it. I think it's a rebranding that needed to be done and it kind of captures your eye when you're sitting behind one of these in traffic. So big fan of it, absolutely. And also it was one of the first for the new taillights. Uh, so having sort of the, the broken up uh, on the sides and then combination lamp included and then that one strip that goes kind of from you know left to right or right to left uh, and again when you're in traffic and you see one of these one car two cars three cars ahead of you it looks really cool uh, the wiper is exposed and it's at the bottom of the windshield on something like the bigger brother rx it's actually hidden underneath the uh the rear sort of fin here but on the the nx and that's a that's a good way to tell the difference between the two when you see them driving is uh, the NX will always be exposed. So that is something as well. Looking at the rear bumper, we do have this other little decoration here. It's kind of like a, it's like a bumper guard, I guess you could say. It says Lexus on it. And then below that we have more of a matte black sort of finish. Interesting question I was asked the other day was why do most cars now not really accentuate uh, the exhaust port? So, you know, you'll notice that uh, it was even four or five years ago, any car in this segment had sort of like an, like an integrated exhaust port with chrome. It really caught your eye. Sometimes with some brands, it was even fake. It was like a fake exhaust port just to show that it was there. And now you'll notice as you drive around, it's actually starting to be phased out of the industry. And the, 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 the answer is, which is my take on it, is we know in the next five, 10, 15 years, EVs are going to be way more dominant than they are now and, and probably outnumber gas cars on the road if, you know, if everybody, if the predictions are true. And having cars now come out, even though this one does have a gas engine, there is an exhaust pipe under there, now come out without that exhaust sort of sitting there, it kind of future proofs it a little bit so that it doesn't look super out of place when it's driving around with this big exhaust stack when most of the cars on the road are going to be EVs. That's my own take on it. I could be totally wrong, Lexus. Uh, put in the comments maybe what you think, but that was just my own take on it because uh, the way the industry is going and that sort of thing. So taking a look at the cargo space. So again, this segment is really similar for cargo space and actually the NX doesn't have a ton more space, or sorry, a ton less space than the bigger brother RX. When you buy a new NX, you do get a few accessories for free, like, you know, the that kind of be string up across the summer mats, which most people in Canada, I think, just leave in their trunk in the plastic bag or in their garage. And then also sort of like a carpet mat. Uh, this one we did put a cargo liner in. So the cargo liner, it's just a little bit more durable. It's easier to clean up like when you spill anything on this nice carpet, it's hard to sweep, I find. So having the cargo liner does protect, but also just makes it a little bit cleaner. And also it's kind of got this nice metal Lexus emblem, which is kind of cool because it makes it so, you know, you could tell it's a genuine accessory. Also little hack that I found out after spending some time with the NX is there's a massive storage capacity back here. Since it doesn't have a spare tire and uses run flats, this space is absolutely open. So I would probably put like some cleaning products in there just because if I'm crazy like that, maybe some Windex, definitely a microfiber. I don't know, anything else that I might need, probably tire shine because of, I always like a black, you know, a black shiny tire. I would just keep it back there. It wouldn't spill anywhere. And even if it did, it's all plastic. So it'd be easy to clean. And uh, I just, it's one of those things that you never know when you need it. Also, my favorite when it comes to SUVs is when there's a hook for your groceries and there is, we can put this little hook down, hook on your plastic bag, which probably shouldn't be using plastic bags anymore because everybody's switching up paper and reusable bags. So maybe put on your reusable, ba reusable bag on that, uh, on that hook so that your Wonder Bread doesn't go flying across your trunk, which happens to me quite, quite regularly, way more than I would like to admit. Uh, also, uh, that cargo liner that I talked about does continue on the back of the seats. So when you fold down the seats and you have some Ikea furniture in there, it's not gonna scratch the carpet on the back of the seat because that carpet can be easily scratched, especially if you have like a corner of a piece of wood from Home Depot, it could rip through that pretty easy on any car. That cargo liner really protects that. Uh, and it still gives you access that if you had child seats in the, in the back, uh, you could still loop around that extra anchor because they've, they've opened up a little window for it. Um, 
On here we have the tonneau cover. Now the tonneau cover is a soft one. So it does fold up, you can store it, uh, but it is soft. It's kind of just a privacy cover. So if you have valuables, valuables in the trunk and you're parked, someone can't just look through the window and see what you have back there. So I used to just get rid of these in a lot of my cars, but I've changed and now I keep it in because of I don't want someone seeing my camera bag in the back and smashing a window to try and get it. So it just kind of gets rid of that temptation that could be there. Uh, but anyway, overall, great storage capacity. It's a nice height to load things into and uh, it does have this little scuff plate here too, uh, just you know, as you're loading in and out of boxes. And on the executive, there is power switches back here to fold down those, power, those rear seats uh, by using uh, you know, a couple electronic switches and you can hold them and it'll pull them down. Uh, so anyway, that's the trunk. Okay, so now for the absolutely favorite part of the new NX, which is the door handles. So these are the new E-latch door handles. We've seen this in the RX. We're gonna see it in a lot more cars. And to open it, you're just gonna squeeze a little bit and it's gonna open up. There's like a little touch pad in there. On the inside of the door is my actual favorite part of that system. And that's the fact that you can just use your thumb to open the door. So you're just gonna apply pressure there and in one motion, you're going to kind of just push using your hand and the rest of your arm instead of the awkward thing that we've all done for years, which is pulling a handle and then using like our elbow to kind of push open the door, which in turn wears out that soft uh, injected molding that all the luxury cars have had. Now there is a fail safe. If the car is dead, you can just kind of apply pressure to this little thing right here and it'll open it up. Uh, so it does kind of hurt when you do it, but it does work when you need to. And from the inside, you can just kind of like put your finger behind it and pull outward. Sometimes you'd have to do it twice just to activate it, but it does work that way. And sometimes people just do that anyway because they forget how to get out. Uh, now, the interior of this NX Executive is the rich cream interior. Super, super unique. I absolutely love it. It has a two-tone sort of vibe that kind of brightens the cabin. And what I mean by that is anywhere that your clothes are touching are, is black. So you don't have to worry about the staining of, you know, something like, a, like an off-white leather. But on all the other spots, it's that off-white that sort of brightens up the cabin and accentuates some of, you know, the features of the interior. Also, it has this really nice orange stitching that, blunt, that it, just, it just matches it very well. You'll see that on those soft injected uh, door panels, as well as some of the leather treatments throughout the cabin, as well as even the stitching on the steering wheel has that too. Now, the wood also does feel very high-end. It is an open pour matte black wood. And this particular model also has the Mark Levinson sound system, which has been improved greatly over the past years and is very, it's, an, it's never talked about for some reason. Now in Canada, you have to get the executive package to get that. Uh, I think in other markets, you might correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you can maybe just add that to certain packages, but definitely worth the money. However much the Mark Levinson costs, pay it because it's great. So anyway, that's my advice for you. Uh, let's check out the driver's side. So sitting in the cabin, I'm reminded about how many features the new executive NX350H has. We have a button here for intelligent park assist where if you're in a parking lot, you can press that button and the car can parallel park itself or just regular park itself, I guess you would call it. And it pops up on the screen. You can pick a parking spot. The car will either drive forward or reverse depending on how you picked it and do all the parking for you. It's not as awkward as you would think. The steering wheel does whip around and do its thing. You don't have to touch the brake or anything like that. And it does a really good job in the right scenarios. I have tried it where the parking lot was really rainy or the lines weren't too, you know, I guess easy to see for the sensors and it did kind of struggle a bit, but for the most part, it does a pretty good job. Would I use it all the time? No, but if I was someone that maybe wasn't as comfortable parking, uh, it, it would be maybe a solution for that, especially in like a parking garage, but I do like it. We also have bird's eye view. So again, in those tough parking situations, you can press the button right under that and it's bird's eye view and it uses magic so that when you see the top of your vehicle and you're starting to move one way or the other, it sort of shows you what's also underneath your vehicle. So if you're parked on a line, it'll actually like show you just by using the data that it gathered from the cameras, not actual magic. The cabin itself uh, does feel pretty compact and like a cockpit, which is definitely what they're going for. 
The RX, the Bigger Brother RX, is way more spacious in terms of the layout, but I do kind of like the way it feels. Everything is facing me, it's all pretty close, and we still have the drive switch that is actually uh, super easy to kind of reach. It's just in the center here. We have Eco, Normal, and Sport on this model. And there's, there's also an EV mode button here, which will just kind of try to override that gas engine and make it full EV for a short time if the conditions are right. So if you have your AC, your heated seats and all that stuff cranked, it's probably still gonna kick on the gas engine, but in certain situations, you can kind of uh, turn that on. We use it for coming in and out of the showroom all the time. It just sort of helps. Uh, and there's sort of like an off-road button to the side of that. The shifter is what we've seen in like the LC and the LS and the, you know, the, the hybrids in the lineup where it just kind of snaps back to the center. I really like it. I always point out to people how to use it just because it is a little different from past models, but it is nice. Also, I won't be able to show you right now, but the ambient lighting has gotten a lot better too. We can now customize it, change colors. It's not as bright as some of the competition and I'll tell you why. I've noticed that in some of the other brands, they'll, you know, it looks really cool when you have really bright in uh, ambient lighting. Like it's really cool when you're parked, you're like, oh, I can see everything. It kind of feels like I'm in a nightclub. But when you're driving, if it's maybe a blue or a red that's really bright, I notice it kind of is a distraction on my eyes. So I'm not super mad that it's not very bright, the ambient lighting here when you're able to customize it. I like that you can change the tone of it and the brightness and all that stuff to match. And, and it's still pretty good. So check that out, you have to see it in the dark, uh, but it is nice. The screen, super easy to use. I always use Android Auto because I find car manufacturers over the years just haven't been able to keep up as well with phone companies when it comes to interfaces. Using the Android Auto, it just, it uses that Android interface. And I know all of my friends that use iPhones love the Apple CarPlay version of it. And it just makes it really easy to use, integrates well. I can, you know, ask the assistant on there to make phone calls or check the weather or blah, blah, blah. And it works a lot better than, um, than any other system. If you don't want to use it, the Lexus system is still there and it is still usable. Uh, you still can use cloud-based navigation. You can still use a virtual assistant through Enform and things like that. So it is still there, even if you don't want to use that aspect of your phone. But anyway, you should. Uh, also, we have a rear view mirror that also has uh, the ability to switch to the camera, which is mounted at the back. Uh, so again, if you have too much cargo in here, too many suitcases because you're on your way to the airport or whatever, or maybe you have a really tall person in the back seat, you can switch that on the executive package and see uh, a camera that's you know kind of uh, poised out the back. Otherwise, the cabin just has a really nice you know uh, mix of class style and a little bit of uh, you know modern uh, updates. I, like I said, really like the orange stitching. I think it's really nice uh, and it's a nice touch to it, but that's only in this interior color. So you'd have to pick this. Also, we do have a heads up display on this one with intelligent uh, little touch panels here on the steering wheel. What that does is it makes it so you can customize some of the steering wheel controls to be what you want to see. And instead of just having, you know, four arrows on each side, it actually makes it eight because of those two different pages. So. That's something to play with. It will take some getting used to. I love the adaptive cruise control on this. When I'm driving, I set that as soon as I can and it keeps me in my lane. It keeps the speed relative to the people around me. It's super accurate and you can use it even in the city. Although I don't know if you're supposed to, but I do anyway. And it's never put me in a situation that I was uncomfortable. And also on most NXs, so anything ultra luxury and above in Canada, I'm not sure about other markets, is you can, you can hold sort of the, the turn signal, a half click for two seconds, whether it's right or left. So not a full click, remember, half click. And it'll do lane change assist when you're on the highway. So if you set your cruise control, you have it super comfy, you're, you're moving, you wanna change lanes. If you hold half click for two seconds, the car will check your blind spot, make sure there's no one there, and also change lanes for you in a really safe manner. Some people will say, well, that's not, well, what's the point of that? You have to, you have to do it and pay attention anyway. I really like it. I just think it's just one of those extra cool, one more level towards autonomous. Uh, and I think it's, I don't know, it's just really cool to use. So anyway, that's my take on the interior. There is panel roofs and there is other things to go over, but for the most part, I just wanted to kind of touch on a few of those things. Oh, and sorry, one more thing. You can open the armrest from both sides, which first came out in the LX when they redesigned it in 2018. And uh, just a cool feature. And there's USB-C plugs everywhere. So that's another thing too. Anyway, let me check out the back seat. So in the back seat, 
I'm six foot one. I do have plenty of head space and definitely enough leg space to be able to fit back here, probably with two other people, but definitely more comfortable with one other person uh, for a longer drive. The rear seats do recline a little bit, so it is a little bit more comfortable that way too. And I can fold down this little armrest to be able to, uh, you know, either create a little bit of a, a barrier between me and the person beside me, also put our drinks and also have a little bit of an armrest. Also, we do have two USB-C ports here at the back and the classic 12 volt uh, regular kind of car outlet. What you, they used to call a cigarette lighter, but they don't anymore. And we also have two heated seats for that passenger and for me. And I think you could fit two, two child seats back here, I think would be the, uh, the magic number if I had to guess. And the fact that it's got the panel roof does create a little bit extra uh, light. And they didn't cheap out on you know, any of the door panel stuff. So we still have some exposed wood trim uh, and also the Mark Levinson stamp here for the sound system and also the e-latch door handle, stuff like that. So the back seat still a place to be. Is it a massive, you know, sedan back here? No, but for most people, it's gonna be totally fine. Especially if you're just driving some friends around or have a couple car seats, it'll work for anybody, I think. So if you're in the market for a small SUV or crossover, definitely take a look at the NX. It's not that long of a wait right now. Inventory levels are rising. It's great on gas. There's no range anxiety because of it's a self-charging hybrid and it is a full hybrid, by the way. And it's not that much more money for a base model than something like a RAV4. So definitely check it out. The ride is smooth, the handling is good, and it's a Lexus at the end of the day. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, put them in the comment box. I'll try to get to all of them. Remember to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.